I'm joined by Philip Poole. He's Global Head of Macro and Investment Strategy for HSBC Global Asset Management, overseeing a whopping 440 odd uh, and a half billion dollars in assets. Uh, quite a responsibility, Philip. So, I mean, uh, it's a show of unity between the French and the Germans. Uh, do you buy into this? Well, clearly, there's still tension there. From the German point of view, they've been pushing uh, bigger private sector involvement. The French have been resisting that because the French banks, of course, have got the most exposure. So there's certainly tension, but it seems as though we're moving towards a solution, finally a sustainable solution for Greece. The FSF is obviously moving ahead. We've got the Slovak vote today. That should go well, I think. Um, then it's going to be levered. Uh, and then we basically have a plan. Uh, and that plan, hopefully, will be ready by, by the end of the month, ready for that G20 meeting. Uh, you think there's, going to be, there's going to have to be some sort of uh, default here, isn't there, though? And the question is, is how it's managed. Well, the issue is, as of July, that was already baked yeah. in because there was an agreement uh, with the banks for a 21% haircut through a, a managed swap. And it's important, really, how this gets, gets uh, how the process is managed because a default, a disorderly default, clearly is a very negative scenario. Mm -hmm. If this is managed through a swap or a series of swaps, it's much more orderly. There are clearly issues for, for banks that need to be recapitalized potentially. Um, obviously, the stock price has to adjust. But that's the best solution. And finally, it seems as though we move into something which could be sustainable rather than just pushing this problem so into the future. We, we could have had this in July. Instead of, I think, from the, the beginning of May, we've wiped something like $10 trillion of uh, equity values. And it's partly down to this issue. It's partly down to this issue, for sure, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's clear that uh, politicians have been behind the curve. Uh, it's been too little too late uh, the whole time. But now there seems to be a reality that's settling in and, and decisions appear to be taking, uh, taking place. So what happens then? I mean, do investors then turn their attention, or I could say their guns even here as well, and start taking a pot shot at some of the other Europe, uh, European countries? Or do they then start looking at the US, for instance? I think the U.S. could well come back into the spotlight uh, before the end of the year because clearly they promised to cut between 2.1 and 2.4 trillion from the, uh, the deficit over the next 10 years. Those numbers uh, are out there, but there's no plan yet in terms of what's going to be cut. So the Commission is talking about that. There could well be a lot of noise around that. So, yes, the focus could well shift back to the U.S., but I think it's also uh, going to be the case that people will start looking at the valuations in the market, some of these valuations are very attractive. Uh, they are, especially for a long-term uh, investor, but how do they stack up with also uh, valuations which are low in this part of the world? Well, for sure, yeah. In this part of the world, uh, China, I think, looks very good value. Uh, India has certainly cheapened a lot. Uh, but also the other BRIC markets, uh, Russia in particular, looking very cheap. So emerging markets, I think, have sold off on the back of developed market problems, and that there's certainly value there in the equity market, in the corporate bond market as well. Uh, I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about what we've seen in terms of buying of uh, bank shares yesterday by Chinese, well, the China, I'll call it the Chinese authorities there. Mm -hmm. That's sending out a message that the banking system is going to be well supported by the state. Absolutely. I mean, there's been a lot of speculation about the banks. I think it's been overdone. Uh, in fact, I think some of the, many of the risks have been overdone. Uh, and certainly the Chinese move yesterday is important to try to re-establish confidence there in the banking sector. Yeah, so what are you doing in terms of asset allocation right now? Well, we particularly, I think, uh, like emerging market debt, we think uh, that's cheapened. Um, uh, really, it's been an indiscriminate sell-off, sell really. Well, an awful summer, really, for yes, the long-only funds. Yeah. Absolutely. So we like emerging market debt. Um, we like uh, debt in Asia as well. Corporate bonds uh, across investment grade and emerging markets with good value. And then in the commodity space, uh, we think that there's value there as well. Um, certainly some of the commodity-related equity markets uh, looking very cheap. Russia's trading on less than four and a half times uh, 2012 earnings. So, you know, that, the, the, these markets are trading at deep discounts to, to their averages. There's a reason why, though, isn't there, Philip? I mean, really, there is this deep-seated uncertainty. I mean, do we get in the fourth quarter a sustainable rally, or is this what we're seeing at the moment, a bear market rally? I think at the moment it's a bear market rally. Um, we're probably going to bump along the bottom for a while when we do hit that bottom. Um, expectations are clearly building that, that the European situation is being resolved. Of course, there is a, a risk that, that having promised they don't deliver. That's, that we've seen that in the past as well. So I, I think it takes a while to stabilize sentiment. But for longer term investors, these, these levels already, I think, are offering substantial value. Okay, what's your top pick? My top pick, uh, actually I, write, I like the Russian equity market, I think it's extremely cheap, 
I think oil will bounce back. Um, low growth in the developed world, but emerging markets continue to grow rapidly. That's the driver, really, for commodity prices, including oil. Philip, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Philip Poole from HSBC.